In the last module, we learned about the mind and hand, hand and mind connection. In this module, we're going to go through a brief history of palm tree so you know where things are coming from. So since the beginning of time, people have contemplated their hands. Our prehistoric ancestors likely knew that each hand was unique, as evidenced by the many hand shapes that go together with pictures of animals and people on cave walls. It is as though the artists used their handprints as signatures or magical talismans. There is evidence that palm tree was practiced as a serious art in every ancient civilization. But if we trace its roots to the very beginning, it is probable that the art and science of palm tree had its birth in India. As you can see here, we have the Cave of the Hands in Patagonia, Argentina, and this was done circa 9000 to 8000 BCE. Now, coming back to India. References to palm tree appeared in texts that were written in India more than 4,000 years ago. The Indian Vedas, among the oldest religious texts in the world, make reference to hand reading. Some ancient scriptures instruct monks not to read palms for money. This caution to the monks let us know that palm tree was already a profession in 2000 BCE. The science of palm reading also was used for medicinal purposes in China. And it happened about the same time that Indian palm tree. Chinese medical texts were the first to mention the importance of the lines in the hand and their use in diagramming or diagnosing disease. The Chinese were also the first to make up or use of pin fingerprints for identification. A thousand years before fingerprints were even used in the West, Chinese emperors used their thumbprints to sign and seal documents. From India, palm tree migrated both east and west. There was cross-pollination, not only spiritually, but also philosophically between India and other countries. Palm tree was practiced through the Middle East long before the birth of Christ, and both Arabs and Jews developed palm reading traditions. References to palm tree were found in the Old Testament as well as in the Quran. And it shall be to you as the sign upon the hand. This was in Exodus 13.9. God put his seal upon man's hand so that men might know his work. Job 37 7. There are numerous references in the Quran stating that the inner nature of an individual can be understood by carefully observing the signs written on the body. Arabic palm tree had a great influence upon the development of this art in Europe. Arabic texts can be found today in the Vatican Library. It is said this library contains one of the largest collections of palm tree and astrological books from the ancient and modern worlds. As you can see, chiromancy, which is reading of the hands, is also thought to have been known and practiced amongst early Arabic culture as well. That is the practice of physiognomy or firasa, which was known to the Arabs as attested by several references within the Quran. We shows the general acceptance of the idea that the outer form of the body reveals the inner state of the person. Aristotle believed that all parts of the body could be read to reveal each person's inner character. One of the older surviving essays on palm tree, it is attributed to Aristotle. Unfortunately, only one fragment of this essay has come down to us. 
This essay was translated into English in 1738 when it was published in London along with other works of the great philosopher under the title Aristotle's Masterpiece. Palmstreet Lore describes how Aristotle found a book on Palm Street during his travels in Egypt on an altar dedicated to Hermes. He sent this book to his student Alexander the Great, who made enthusiastic use of it. Whether this is true, we can never know. But it does suggest that Palm Street was practiced in ancient Egypt. What a better place to find a treatise on Palm Street than that on the altar of Hermes, the God of Knowledge, Learning, and Communication. Now, there is very little surviving literature on Palm Street from ancient Greece, but it was known that historic figures such as Hippocrates, Homer, Plato, Alexander the Great, valued the hand as a locus of divination and character analysis. The Crusaders, returning from the Middle East, brought many of the Islamic arts to Europe, including Palm Street. Another important source for knowledge of Palm Street was the nomadic gypsies, who migrated from India in the 13th and 14th centuries. The main Palm Street available to the common folk of Europe, it was the gypsies who kept the tradition alive during the Middle Ages when Christian church opposed all forms of divination. During the Middle Ages, many wise men and women understood the truth of this ancient art and continued to make use of it in private. Paracelsus, which was born in 1493 and died in 1541, it is already known in our alchemy course as a legendary physician and a father of homeopathy, and he was considered the first modern palmist. He used the information on the palm for both self-knowledge and diagnosing disease. Now, two 19th century French authors, and I hope I can pronounce this right, but the Apertini and De Valore, De Valore, oh, I'm so sorry. I can't pronounce the name. But anyways, I'm pretty sure you're doing better at reading the French and doing they wrote the first comprehensive books on palm tree in the West. Now, these two French authors work independently of one another. Their research laid the foundation for the knowledge of bo both the shapes of lines of the hand. Their books caused an explosion in the popularity of palm tree. The first of them was born in 1798 his name, like it says, Casimir Stanislas de Pertingi, and was introduced to Palm Street by a Spanish gypsy while he was a captain in Napoleon's army. He brought his interest and curiosity with him back to France, where he began to study the shapes of the hands. His important book, La Chirogmagni, or Chiromagnia, was published in 1843. By a curious coincidence, we already talked about Adrian Adolf de Barore. He was born in 1801 and died in 1886. He was a portrait, also introduced to the subject by Spanish gypsy. De Barore was encouraged to continue his study of palm tree by the famous cabalist and ceremonial magician Eliphaz Elifa, Levy. He wrote two books concentrating on the lines of the hand. As you can see here, one of the called Mysteries of the Main and Revelation Completes. Now, one of the most famous European palmists was William John Warner, better known as Kiro, and he was born in 1866 and died in 1936. A multi-talented psychic, writer, and entrepreneur, his charisma, charm, and skill brought him into close contact with many eminent people of his day. Included among his clients were the Prime Minister of England and Edward Prince of Wales. Famous writers and actors flocked to his studio. After having his palm read by Kiro, 
Mark Twain wrote, Kiro has exposed my character to me with humiliating accuracy. I ought not to confess this accuracy, as still I am moved to do it. In the early 20th century, an American doctor by the name of William Benham became acquainted with palm tree at the age of 13 and remained fascinated with it all his life. He devoted a lifetime of observation to clarifying the indications found on the hand. He earned a medical degree to further his study of palm tree and spent time as a railroad doctor. In his travels across America, he visited many hospitals and prisons so that he might study the hands of patients and inmates. In 1900, as you can see in the picture, Dr. Benham brought Palm Street many steps forward with the publication of his seminal book called The Laws of Scientific Handwriting. The art and science of handwriting in the Benham lineage of Palm Street we were going to talk here about Ellen Goldberg, which was the earliest teacher at the School of Inner Vision in New York City, which studied with Florence Maser, who was William Benham's protege of 13 years. And I had to say that most of the research that we're going to cover in this course has to do with the work of Ellen Goldberg. Benham stated that under his tutelage, Measure had developed into the most competent hand analyst in the world. When Measure was retired from teaching, she read Ellen's palms and exclaimed, Why, you can do what I can do. One might say that this book is a grandchild of Beham. Thought and attitudes about life the place of women, sexuality, and the freedom of the individual to choose their own way have evolved quite a bit since the late 1800s. I know that some of the qualities of what we call the seven mounds have expanded over time and adapted to life in the 21st century. So this course is going to take a new look to old patterns. So, you can learn to read hands and perhaps contribute your own insights to this fine art and science. Let's get started with an easy, concise introduction to the mounds and major lines in the arm of Palm Street.